Hello here. Today I'm going to take a look with you guys at the Vermona uh, Kick Lancet. So um, the Vermona, uh, first of all I want to talk just a little bit about the brand, you know. Uh, here in Israel, for example, it's um, kind of like a niche brand. Uh, everybody's getting like Nords and viruses, but everybody always wants to get a Vermona, you know. It's something not many people get their hands on and it has a sort of like a little bit of a mystique. Um, We'll get into the prices later. It's also a little bit more pricey in my country than in other countries. All of their products I'm talking about. So we had a chance to get a Vermona Kick Lancet used for a very good price uh, here. And you know, I jumped on it and I decided to finally check out um, a Vermona product for myself at my home. So this is uh, uh, a kick machine. Uh, this is all it is and all it wants to be um, and what it's made for. It's called the Kick Lancet. What it does is kicks. So you have, um, let's talk about the box itself. It's very sturdy, looks really nice. Uh, I think this is part of what leads to the Vermona Mystiques, you know, the really nice kind of off-white, ivory sort of knobs. Even the logo, you know, sort of like 1970s sci-fi. Everything is kind of uh, cool and sexy in a retro sort of way in um, how it looks. Um, and you do have a lot of knobs on the front panel. Everything that you can do with the sound is via the front panel. There's no hidden anything. It is 100% analog. Um, and you do have, other than the output um, for the sound and the uh, MIDI in and MIDI through, you do have also um, an ability to control the sound generation instead of uh, via MIDI, um, via audio signal or gate signal or a switch signal. Um, so if you're working with external gear, um, with modular systems and stuff like that, then you can control it that way as well. It'll respond. Um, so, the sound generation is actually um, really typical of what you'd find on any sort of kick synth uh, like this. If you go to the Vermona vet website, um, this is actually the whole manual, you know, uh, excluding, you know, let's say the, the examples. So this is basically the manual. There's nothing to actually know or not to know here. And even if you're new to sound, um, this might have a lot of knobs for a kick, but as you'll see, it's really kind of straightforward. So what do we have here? If you take a look, um, we have a uh, one ask synth. Basically, let's call it like a one and a half. I'll show you why in a second. But let's take a look at the top. So it's a one ask synth uh, over at the top, the source. And what you have is a, a starting pitch for the source. Um, you can go really high in frequency, like it's a, like, for example, but then it's like really useless for a kick and the rest of the synthesis doesn't lend to you using the high pitch. So pitch knob, a decay for the length of the source, and then you have a bend, which is basically pitch bend, and time, which is a decay, decay for the pitch bend. So basic pitch, ADSR decay, pitch bend, pitch decay. And then you have something kind of weird over here. Um, I've not really found a use for this at all. FM frequency and FM int, like a sort of FM amount. So what, what, would this, what, what this does is, I'll just put it on a high pitch for a second so you can hear distinctly what this does. It's just um, like on any other synth, um, an FM source. So it starts as an LFO on low frequency and it gets into the audio range. And it's kind of weird for me, I mean, I'll show you why I think they put it in here, but... So it sounds like this. So if I take it up... So you get that sort of like a uh, um, bit crush sound that you'd get uh, um, if you put like a bit crusher on something or if you take any actual um, analog filter and um, frequency modulated, that's kind of like the typical sound. How does it lend to making kicks? So. As you notice here, I have everything closed. You're hearing, okay, let's take this off as well. So we're hearing just the top section right now. And let's take off the FM for a second. I'll get you into some of like the basic thing. So let's uh, already criticize this machine a little bit. I don't know why like the pitch knob, I don't need this whole range from like the half point even below, you know? Uh, if this is a kick machine, then all you really need is like the really low range. And if this knob was scaled, so the this whole knob would be that little range, then you could find really 
easier to find these tiny spots because here I'm playing with these tiny spots on a really, you know, I don't have a lot of movement range. So scale this thing across the whole knob and forget about, don't, I don't even need this, I don't need these high frequencies at all to begin with, so. So, you take some sort of low pitch sound, you decide how long you want it, how much of an oomph you want for it. And then, let's say you take the pitch bend off, so you'd have just the, the oscillator, which in this case is a sign. You start to bend it, and depending on the length of the bend, you get different sort of effects. Now, as you notice while I'm playing it with it, um, the palette isn't really that big, you know? Uh, it's not like you can make like a ton of different kicks, you know? It's not, uh, unlike a digital device, the, the options are kind of limited, you know? Um, it will produce a kick, but it's, I see it like, uh, you know how you have these um, Eurac modular modules that make like an 808 module or a 909 module, for example, from like Tip Top Audio? Um, so I think that does the job and it gets you a wider palette than this thing. But it does have some options that I'll show you. So this, this is just like the basic bass sound. But the kick is not complete yet and it does give you a little bit more over here. The attack knob basically, it, it's, uh, um, I think it is a bit confusing to call it that. What it does is add a little bit of a snap. It's like a square uh, oscillator that is just a really high snap. So as I add it in, you get the really um, distinct, you know, kicking snap. Now the weird thing here is, um, I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear it through this quality of this recording of the video, but for example, if, I, if it's closed and I press it right now, there's a little bit of a distortion on the low end over there. It's not really that clean. Um, and I can hear really distinct sort of frequency and everything going on, but as I mix in this, uh, this extra oscillator, this attack of a, of a square, the sound changes a little, a little bit even on the low end. So it's not like a, you're mixing two different things. It's sort of like OSC mixing. It's not, I don't know if it's like before some processing here or what, what is going on exactly that lends to that happening, but as you insert that high transient, it also changes a little bit the, the tone and feel of the lower portion of the sound. So take that in mind. Um, another little criticism here I have is that, again, if, if everything is closed, if I'm not using the snap, the kick tends just to be really, really, you know, there's no, no character to it at all, you know? It's really dry. So you must have this snap here to, to get a little bit of a meat in there. If you don't have it at all, you know, it starts to sound nice once you kind of pass the halfway point um, with this knob. Um, the next knob on the low section, um, as you see, they call it source and then mixer because you kind of like mix in to the sound. So the second knob, the first knob, let's, they call it attack. Remember, it's like a little pulse transient. The second knob is called noise, and basically what it is is just noise. And unlike here, when I told you it sounds a little bit like OSC mixing, this sounds like just blending in noise after the fact or something like that. I don't really, you know, if you want sort of like gabber kicks and stuff like that, you can do it with this. I guess adding the noise component also, um, while also letting you go a little bit higher with the pitch, um, so it, it could also serve you for like snare drums, you know? You could make snare drums with this thing, not just kicks. Um, but again, if we're focusing on the kick creation, I don't really, for, for my sounds of kicks, I don't really see myself using this at all. And even again, even if one would use it, you know, if you go all the way, it's really harsh, you know? Even if you'd use it, you'd probably only use a tiny bit, even if you're like making really gabberish, distorted stuff. Um, Again, I just think if you want that sound, you know, uh, distortion after this would be a much better solution than just adding a fuck ton of white noise on top. I don't know. I don't get it. Okay, anyways, um, the next knob is a... Actually, you know, maybe it should have been here because um, it selects between a sign and a square for the source. So, this would be the square and this would be the sign. Now, again, we're not talking like in a synth. 
the the difference is not really that distinct, you know, as far as synthesis. It's more a difference in like a little bit of the tone in the color. And the square is obviously much harsher, at least on these settings, you know. Let's, this would be the square. And this would be like the sign. Again, um, anything but like uh, being really kind of mellow and sweet with this thing kind of gets really distorted and really uh, really quickly gets into the gabber and like for me useless kind of sort of territory you know so a little bit iffy um, the fourth knob is the balls knob this is actually kind of cute the kick without it would sound like this and it gets I think it's like some sort of compression uh, maybe it's like a compressor and an expander or something um, something of the sort Basically, if you perceive it as a compressor, that's good enough, you know. Um, to me, it just sounds like it takes the kick in, you know, and straightens it up a little bit. And it does give some punch to the sound. Especially if you sort of hit some sweet spots. Now, again, this being analog, it's a very, very, very sweet spot sort of thing, you know. Um, like, something like this could really sound totally different than something like this, you know. It's really, really a matter of touch, touch and go here, which is why I really, like I mentioned before, if the knobs were really scaled, I mean, they call it the kick land set, you know, so if the knobs, so why do we, don't even give me a full oscillator, it's cool, it's cute that you're giving me the feature, but if you want to focus it for kicks, then focus my tweaking to, to kicks, you know, not just like have it do kicks, focus the workflow towards making kicks, I think, this is a little bit of my uh, criticism. Now, um... I've mentioned before this FM knob, which to me sounds a little bit kind of kind of useless. But one reason I think they might have included it is to give a little bit more of that analog vibe. So if you if you put in a little bit of the FM, find again find the sweet spot. Then what it really does is that it makes it that every kick is a little bit different. You know, it moves the pitch around a little bit. So I'm not even getting into the audio rate, like somewhere in the LFO range. So it'll have a little bit more bass and a little bit less bass, tiny bit if you find a really nice sweet spot. So that's the machine itself. As you see, I, I mean, it kind of makes cool sounds, but you see, I'm not really thrilled. You know, it's it's not special in any way, really. It's not. Um, if you're gonna play live with this thing, you know, if you're saying, okay, cool, you know, I know I can do it with a plugin, but this is for live. But it's kind of really, it's hard, it's hard to tweak this thing live because it's really, really fiddly, you know, it's not like you have positions, you know, it's not like you're playing a synth and you're flying around with the cutoff, you can't really do that here. Uh, if you move this pitch knob, just look, the difference is really, now it's a kick. I moved it a little bit, but it's no longer a kick drum at all, you know, so you can't really be partying up and just like tweaking this thing, it's just not what it's made for. Um, if at all, it's made for like really like studio tweaks and finding like a nice sweet spot and hitting it. Again, if you're making um, crazy stuff and you don't mind that, yeah, fine, it's a kick now, it can be a snare now, you know. If you're doing all that and maybe with some modular stuff going in and switching it around, that could be cool. But if you're producing techno or psytrance music and you're kind of turned on by this thing, I think relax a little bit. Um, here in Israel, which, which brings me to the price, here in Israel it's cost like 2,000 shekels, which is outrageous compared to what it costs in other countries. Uh, 2,000 is like, what, 400 euros, something like that, even a little more. Um, and you can find it for 183 euros, uh, sorry, 249 euros, and uh, 144, and for various prices that are much better than what you find it in my country. But I'm not sure that even for that price, it's it's the right device for for most people. Um, keep that in mind. If you if you see it like for this price, like this is the new price, and you find it for half of that used, and you want to check out, um, then yeah, cool. But if you're making your samples, I mean, bottom line is I could make kicks that are more useful for me if I just use like a wave editor and you know a new file and SoundForge and just pick a frequency and start putting pitch envelopes. It's more useful to me. Um, if you're a freak for this stuff, go for it. Otherwise, I think you can pass up on this one. Um, I hope this helps out a little bit. Check our other videos and let me know what you think of the Vermona Kick Lens set. Have a good one. Ciao.